Welcome to the show, folks. Well, it's Gimme Break Saturday. It's going to be on four nights a week. Now on Monday. Now on Wednesday. Now on Friday. And Saturday. Monday, Wednesday. Friday and Saturday. So, latest cases of COVID-19 as of today. This was posted hours ago. Seven new cases. 18 new cases, which brings it up to 89. Total cases, 5352, which brings it out up to 33,000, close to 34,000 cases. Confirmed positive, 62, 23, 25, 2, which, which subtracts now to 175. 1175. Five new cases, 630. Recover, 30,188. This was on the death analysis. This is not fake. This was from the Texas Health Department. So, again, what can we know about this? The masks. That is a big issue here. And, uh, I want to point out something. As you know, Inside Edition did a story about the mass movement that happened in Los Angeles because they thought the uh, the stuff was fake. They thought the numbers were fake. But I tell you, this was not fake. This was not staged. These were these are these are the facts from your from the state from the state department. Not from the state department. I mean the state health department. And uh, this is a big issue. And uh, as Lisa, as Inside Edition's Lisa Guerrero tells us, it's the anti-mask wearing movement. What does it mean? Take a look. All the studies on the effectiveness of masks, you got to wonder, what are people thinking? There is actually a movement of anti-maskers invading shopping malls, heading into stores and causing all kinds of disturbances. Lisa Guerrero reports. It's a growing and disturbing new phenomenon. Anti-maskers invading high-end stores and malls, causing maximum chaos and disruption. They took over Bloomingdale's in Century City. At one point, they broke out in President Trump's signature dance, YMCA. Anti-maskers stampeded this supermarket in Los Angeles. He needs a mask. You guys are all going to get sick. Hey, hey. Watch as things turn violent in the freezer aisle. The altercation continued at the cash register. After anti-maskers stormed the Century City Mall, employees at a Steve Madden shoe store blocked the door with their bodies as people tried to force their way in. <laughs> Screaming matches broke out with other shoppers. My mother is in the hospital with COVID! A lot of people <laughs> die. That's life. Shifa Bagheri is an anti-mask leader. Maskless shopping is for people that believe in freedom over fear. We are not going to be controlled by the media. We have our own thoughts and we have our own reasons for not doing things. And we're not breaking a law by not wearing a, a mask. So do you believe that COVID-19 can be spread from people not wearing masks? It can be spread no matter what. Those masks don't do anything. So you don't think the masks it's help? They don't help. One person is dying in Los Angeles every I, 10 minutes I, I don't want to keep hearing these fake statistics. That's They're not fake. fake. They're all fake. Shoppers I spoke to are outraged, fearing they might catch COVID-19. So you were here this weekend when the anti-maskers were invading this Ralph's. What do you think about this? I think people like that should be locked up. Yes. It's disrespectful I agree. and it's very barbaric. I'm very upset by it because it puts pe innocent people at risk. And it's so unnecessary and so unkind and cruel. 
Despite the backlash, the shop mass free movement has more protests on the way. And your point is what? My point is freedom. You do not tell us what to do with our faces. Yes. And what no, you're doing no. is you're part the of a satanic the right mask wearing ritual wearing that thing. You are part of a I satanic think we're done mask with this wearing interview. ritual. Okay, thank yes. you so much for your time, Shiva. Well, police were called to a number of anti-mask protests, but no arrests were made. There never were arrests as far as we, as far as I know. But, let's Google the anti-mask, we would anti-mask shoppers arrest. I mean, this is the very latest, and this is from the LA Times. This was just last week. The article from the Los Angeles Times says, LAPD will arrest anti-mask protests who arrest others. Yes. That, this is going to have to Los Angeles Mayor Eric Gregetti, a Connecticut group of anti-masks who descend on the Westfield Century City Mall on, on Sunday in protest of COVID-19 health mandates of the Times harassing employees and customers. The police made no arrest Sunday. But did take two reports of battery, and the mayor said that in the future police officers will take action and, and arrest lawbreakers in such situations. The police chief of Los Angeles said, defending his officers handling such incidents without arrests, saying they had followed guidance from him and the other police leaders to focus on lowering, lowering intentions. He also said, and they began to speak with seven instructions. They were told to first speak with the operator or whatever business is being protested, then support with the operator enforcing the mask requirements. They also said the officer reported that to reach the point of having to use force such instances are prepared to physically enforce the rules. That incident Sunday, which began without special order, then continued. These were videos and social media of a group without masks. One of them showed a grocery store like the one we saw. I don't need that. I don't wear masks. It's this is something called the mask Nazi. And just weeks ago, a group of maskless demonstrators forced his way into a newborn market. I mean look at the and this is the graph. ICU is a dark blue. Thousand. Other up to twenty thousand. Los Angeles County, California is just raising the numbers. It's now up to one million. And the young woman we, and the you know, and the woman we saw in that piece from Inside Edition, well Well let me tell you, she's got it all wrong. Those numbers are not fake. Those are real from the health department. These were numbers divided by were operated by the state's health department. In other words, they help track COVID. And now LAPD is going to be doing these arrests. And now, just two hours ago, there was an anti-mask protester. He was arrested for trespassing in Sprouts Farm Market in Fresno. This was the legal notice. See it. And this was just from Fox 26 News. I mean, these are a list of articles. A group of anti have been showing up caused Sprouts for totally shut down on Saturday. They said that the individual liberties gave the department a heads up Saturday morning. There would be a, around noon. They went to toll wine and more. And this was the arrest warning. Fresno County is currently under a stay at home order issued by the governor. I mean, this was this is just one arrest. And despite that, this is only one arrest if we get fined. There was no other. This was they, there was no other arrest. And not even besides this in Toronto, Canada, police arrest ten people to anti-mask protests in downtown Toronto. 
Only two cases. Three cases, including, including the Global News, the Hamilton Police Department. And last week, this woman refused to wear a mask from the New York Post. And, uh, and police are issuing fines in this. And if it happens in your state, send me a picture and I'll, I'll tackle it. And you are bull These people are bullies. These anti-masks are bullies. They're trying to persuade people not, not to wear masks because they believe in freedom. They're saying, well, the government shouldn't tell us whether we should wear a mask or not. Well, they, they do have the right. This was from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, and they tell you whether or not you should wear a mask or not. Once the virus is over, then they can say you cannot wear a mask anymore. That's when they say it's up to the CDC, they're experts, and until this pandemic is over, you need to start wearing masks. Period. I am not taking this crap very lightly. I take this very, very seriously. As well as these other topics on this show. This show takes these topics very seriously, and it takes no joke. And and I am your worst nightmare. And if this ever happens again, I will come to wherever you're at, and I will haunt you for the rest of your life, even if you're in jail. Don't do this again. Coming up. Last month, I did a topic about virtual truancy, but this comes after one comment from one person saying it makes no sense. We're going to go back to that topic next and explain to you the whole definition of virtual truancy. Stay right here. Welcome back, guys. Last month, I did a topic on this show about virtual truancy. That comes after one comment, the latest comment from one person saying it doesn't make sense. I'd say, you know what, I'm going to do it again just to make perfect sense. This comes after a podcast from Karen and McDonald and from the experts, and they will tell you. And they're going to tell you what it means. Listen. Remote, like virtual truancy is a new term to describe students missing their remote learning classes during the pandemic, such as failing to log in to Zoom for lessons. Uh, and there have been sporadic reports over the... Did you get that? Let me play it for you again. ...to log in to missing their... Rem uh, so virtual truancy is a new term to describe students missing their remote learning classes during the pandemic, such as failing to log in to Zoom for lessons. Exactly. The actual definition of virtual truancy means failure to log in to your remote learning class such as Zoom or Google Classroom. Now do you get that? Now do you see why I covered this topic? And now during and now when I and during that topic I can I told you about why CPS, why all schools in every county would use CPS as a weapon was you child protective service as a weapon to help get the kids into school. That's charging them with neglect. Meaning it you're encouraging the child meaning the parents would, would encourage the child to go to not to skip school. That's not happening. What is gonna happen though is if, if the kid continues to skip school, like okay, I've told you this on a lot of truancy videos I've done. I mean I've done this I've done this last year I've, couple years, one year ago, I don't know. But, uh, I told you this. When you miss school, you miss out on everything. You miss out on your grades, you miss out on credit, you miss out on your friends, and you're violating the law. It's got to stop. I mean, the rates, the rates have gone up since the pandemic, and in the state of Texas. One reason for that is that they don't log in, they have technical issues. Like I said before, if your child has technical issues that from your computer, then what you need to do right away is call your school and say, hey, my computer 
my child's computer is having some technical issues, can you please come take a look at it? And they will have someone come take a look at it. It ain't no joke. And uh, it's very, very big issue here. So, again, a tennis mandatory, whether you're in in person or remote, in person learning or remote learning, a tennis is mandatory. And I'm telling you, you need to know about these things, and that's why we're going to continue doing this until you guys decide to step up to the plate and say, "Look, I need to get my kid into school. No ifs, ands, or buts." Unless I, my child is in unexcused absences. This is what you need to know for educationweek.org. One, student absences have doubled during the pandemic. Before the pandemic, daily absenteeism rates were roughly equal among elementary, middle, and high school students. Now, though the numbers of just high schoolers more likely to be absent 13% typical day, middle school 11%, and elementary schoolers 9%. Next, absences are for students in full time and in-person instruction too. And I agree with that. Next, also, schools should tread carefully on holding students accountable for unexcused absences. That's the point. And that goes for you parents. If you have a child, if you have a child who goes to high school and they have a lot of unexcused absences, you should be held accountable because you send your child to school. Between the ages of 5 and 18, the law specifically states, between the ages of 5 and 18, your child has to be in school unless they have, a, unless, they have a, they have an, unless they have an excused absence. And that goes for parents. If your child's under 18 and continues to keep in school, you're going to be held, you're, you as a parent are going to be held accountable. Meaning you're going to be charged with neglect. And they can arrest you and uh, they can probably arrest you. What I think you should do as a parent is to have your child be held accountable for his attendance. If he's got a lot of absences, you need to go up to the attendance people and say and ask, "What can I do to make it up? Can I go to set? Can I? What can I do to make up the attendance?" I don't know. If Saturday school is too many more because of COVID, but if it is, that's what needs to happen. Very few students face suspension, expulsion, or legal consequences for excused absences. Six percent of educators say their schools would suspend or expel students for unexcused absences. 5% said students would face legal consequences. I mean, students would be subject to harsh penalties for failing to attend school regularly, not arriving with a school building, or not logging onto a virtual live stream. In the case, a 15 year old girl in Michigan went for jail for 78 days after a judge ruled her failure to complete online school represented her, her probation. In some states like Washington, have advised schools that attendance should not be used in a positive manner, but rather inform schools about students missing opportunities to learn. The Nonprofit Attendance Works recommends using attendance data to partner with families to develop a plan to reflect in the student situation, including health, academics, and relationships. That is very, very important. That's why I want to continue doing this truancy thing until you parents step up to the plate and say, look, I need to give my... I need to give... What I need to do right now is have my child go to school, wake up early. My child needs to go to bed early. He needs to be in bed at 9 o'clock, school every day, and not miss a single day. Because if, I, because if he does that, then what he's going to end up doing is going out in the streets and crying. Can't have that happen. It's important you must go to school and get an education. If you want a full-time job, you need to go to school. We'll be right back. Yeah. If you live in the Cal, if you live not in the Cal, if you live in the Fall Bluff area of Flabber Drive, you will notice something that's happened. If you if you're by Yorktown, you may have seen some people who were cleaning up after the homeless. This counts after a person named Joe Kramer, who's a very good friend of mine, decided to go clean up. The spot in Yorktown, 
to help teach people to help clean out to the homeless because they leave trash everywhere. I would have them on a show, but some other issues. Our thing, my thanks to Joe for helping out with that. Also, you and if you live in the, and if you live in the Corpus Christi area, you've been to an Imperial Cafe. You will really notice people not giving out free food. And they and those people said they're on, they're doing it to honor the late father who the free food republic. His late the late father passed away and uh, they're all in the family. Distancing protocols. Curbside delivery only to meet those social distance that go to and tribute to celebrate his life. So they offered about five hundred plates to go to anyone who needed it. Volunteers help the owner hand out all the food today at the whole event. Curbside delivery only to meet those social distancing protocols. Okay. And finally, also Larry King dies at age 17, the great legendary host of Larry King Live. The great legendary dies at 87 due to COVID. All that due to COVID. Larry King was a great legend. He he had his own show on CNN, and he was great. He was a great legend. So, good luck, Larry King. We'll miss you. Yours in our hearts. We'll be back in a moment. The question is, what uh, the question is, what is, what are the rights to an expelled student? Coming up on Monday, we're going to tell you the rights to an expelled student. We're going to tell you all about the expelled student and what rights do they have. Plus, we're going to prepare you for truancy court, what you need to know. That's on Monday. Then Wednesday, safety break. This time, this time, another safety break. We've done fire safety, we've done pedestrian safety. Fire safety, pedestrian safety. This time, it's all about that. Let's focus on Monday. Monday, it's all about the rights to an expelled student. I'm just going to give you a few before we go. I'm not going to give you before we go. I'm just going to give you a little preview. So, that's for Monday. That's all of this edition. Give me a break Saturday. We'll see you again. We're giving a break Monday. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great night.